Each new day brings new challenges, but AARP only sees possibilities. We're tackling the concerns of our communities and supporting the kind of change that can benefit all of us. Take on today with AARP. Learn how at aarp.org slash sd. This morning, a homecoming in name only why one South Dakota high school had a lengthy road trip to their Friday night homecoming game. And if you haven't completed your 2020 census form yet, you'll want to get busy this weekend. We'll tell you about a rapidly approaching deadline that has millions of dollars in federal funding at stake for South Dakota. Good morning. This is Kelloland On The Go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your weekend. We also have your boredom busters coming, but uh, first, our top story. President Trump is beginning his first full day at Walter Reed Army Medical Center this morning where he's undergoing treatment for COVID-19. Trump took a helicopter Friday to the hospital in Maryland where the White House says the president will spend the next few days out of an abundance of caution. Trump reportedly is experiencing mild symptoms including a low-grade fever. Last night, former Trump counselor Kellyanne Conway tweeted that she has tested positive for COVID-19. And we're also learning that campaign manager Bill Stepien also has the virus. Governor Kristi Noem has campaigned and fundraised for the president in several states, including Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Michigan. According to Noem's office, she has tested negative for the coronavirus this week and has not had close contact with anyone who has tested positive, including Trump. Noem's office tells us that all of those appearances are paid for with Trump campaign funds. On Friday, Noam issued a proclamation which officially calls the South Dakota legislature into a special session. Lawmakers will gather in Pier Monday to vote on a resolution to spend more than a billion dollars in federal funds earmarked for businesses, health care providers, schools, and local governments affected by the pandemic. Democrats say they may call for amendments to the spending plan, while Republicans say there are limits to how much they can change in the funding due to strings attached by the federal government. The deadline for completing your 2020 census form is quickly approaching. That deadline is on Monday. And according to the U.S. Census Bureau, South Dakota has a self-response rate of just 67 percent. Every 10 years, the census updates the government on the population of the nation. Knowing how many people in South Dakota can help the state receive millions of dollars in federal funding for programs like Medicare and Medicaid, as well as education funding and transportation. Police are investigating an overnight shots fired incident in Sioux Falls. Police responded last night to the 900 block of North Cliff where officers found multiple cars involved in a crash. Police say shots had been fired at one of the vehicles. No one was hurt. Police recovered two firearms from the scene. Let's get our first look now at the forecast of meteorologist Adam Root in the Storm Center. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Perry, and good morning, everybody. We're off to a nice start to the day out there, but with a little more cloud cover for those of you who are East River. Case in point, Lake Madison this morning, 37 with not much of a breeze to speak of. You can see that deck of cloud cover overhead. That is going to help keep the high temperature today in check. Again, especially if you are East River. Beautiful scene at Falls Park this morning. 44 north wind at 3 miles per hour. Should be a good morning and afternoon for that matter to get outside and go for a walk or a bike ride or whatever you may want to do in the outdoors today. It's also not going to be very windy. 40 as you head into Brookings or here on 41 Pier and Phillip. 49 Rapid City, 46 Mulbridge, Aberdeen, 43. 38 though, Worthington down to 34 Pine Ridge and Valentine. That being said, we're still five degrees warmer in Valentine than we were yesterday, and much of Kelloland is a decent bit warmer compared to yesterday morning, especially in southeastern Kelloland, where we were in the 30s for the first time this season. More cloud cover on the way today for East River locations, maybe even a shower or two, which will be a very welcome sight considering how dry it has been, but we need a lot more, and we don't have a lot more on the way. Details on the rest of your seven-day forecast are coming up. All right, thank you very much, Adam. Well, homecoming typically means a home game for a team where they play. And while that was certainly the case for the Madison Bulldogs last night, it was a little different story for their opponent, the Miller Highmore Herald Rustlers, who were certainly not at home in Madison, but it was, however, their homecoming as well. Both teams found their original plan sidelined due to COVID-19. We talked with Rustler parents, and you can learn what they have to say in this story titled A Rustler Homecoming Away From Home here at Kelloland.com. 
The showcase of remodeled homes and the outdoor living showcase offer the area's latest trends in home remodeling projects. The two showcases feature a total of 12 projects to check out, 11 in Sioux Falls and one in Hartford. The hours are from noon to 5. It costs $5 to see all of the projects. You can purchase tickets at any one of the sites. The showcases run through Sunday. Wild Prairie Winery in Brandon is hosting a harvest festival from noon to 5. There will be live music, a food truck, pumpkin painting, a bounce house, and other kids' activities. Admission is free. Riverview Christmas Tree Farm in Canton is hosting a pumpkin festival that includes pumpkin picking, painting, pumpkin games, and a pumpkin slingshot. There will also be hay rides, farm animals, and fall crafts. Today's hours are from 10 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. The Haunted Trail is open from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. The South Dakota Artisan Fair features two days of indoor shopping at the Sioux Falls Convention Center. More than 80 vendors will be selling their handmade works from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. today and 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Sunday. There will also be children's games, door prizes, and concessions. Admission is free. It's Special Olympics Night at the South Dakota Rodeo Association Finals at the WH Line Fairgrounds. Events include a Dakota Cowboy Trade Show from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. A high school extravaganza starts at 11 o'clock. The rodeo finals are at 6 p.m. Admission is $10 and free for ages 6 and under. Also at the fairgrounds, the Sioux Valley Model Engineer Society is hosting a free open house this weekend. The open house runs from 11 to 4 and includes the largest permanent model train layout in South Dakota. Guests are asked to practice social distancing and will only be allowed in the hallway of the building to view the layout. SuperCon Line is a weekend virtual celebration of comic books, cosplay, anime, board and video games, science fiction, and fantasy. SuperCon Line is a benefit for Reach Literacy and the JY6 Foundation. Adam? Oh, we do have low pressure, believe it or not, overhead. That's keeping the cloud cover in place East River. But sunshine will be in place out west, which will help temperatures climb a little bit higher on the thermometer. You also notice, though, uh, we do have a little bit of rain building in into northeastern parts of Kelowland. Little, if any of that, will actually make its way to the ground at first. But we still could see a couple of isolated showers along the I-29 corridor through the afternoon and then into the first half of the night. The latter time frame more likely uh, south and east, where 29 meets up with I-90. We need any rain we can get as the latest drought monitor now has basically the entirety of Kelloland at bare minimum and abnormally dry conditions beyond a very small sliver of northern Perkins County and that's really just about it. Sadly, we have basically no rain on the way after this evening's small chance for one portion of the region. High pressure builds in. Yes, we do have a cold front or two that's going to try and move through. But as we go through future cast, you're going to notice that these frontal boundaries are rather moisture starved. Beyond a little bit of cloud cover, that's just about it. We are going to continue to wait for appreciable rainfall across much of Kelloland. Now, these cold fronts are also cold fronts in name only. The overall trend is going to be a warmer one with a ridge developing over the Four Corners region that gradually pushes eastward and brings with it a wealth of above average temperatures. So if you were a fan of the last couple of days, you're going to like today. You're going to like tomorrow. But then that's it, as we have warmer temperatures on the way, and they'll stick around through much of next week. High temperatures today, 50s East River, low to mid-60s out west, with overnight low temperatures tonight uh, gradually falling into the 30s across the board. Now, we could see low 30s in southeastern Kelowland if the cloud cover gets out of here faster. If not, we could tack on a good degree or two. So one of those wait-and-see kind of situations there. Low 60s through much of... Kelloland East River, at least. The northeastern corner may be stuck in the upper 50s, but 70s start to pop up a little bit more as we head into areas West River with seven-day forecast featuring 70s all across the board once we hit the next work and school week. We could even see 80s on occasion as we head into next Friday. You also notice it stays bone dry through the end of next week. Well, thank you for joining us for Kelloland on the go. You can get up-to-the-minute developments right here on Kelloland.com. Have a great day.